Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use some of your blending modes and your layer styles to do some burning and dodging um, in your photos a more easy way than using the burn and dodge tools in your tool palette. Um, and then it's a less destructive way too. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is, uh, well I already have my image opened here in uh, Photoshop, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do a couple maintenance things to make this uh, picture better to, to begin with. So I'll just copy the uh, background layer and I always do that just so that I have an original background layer that I can go back to just in case I do something destructive. Um, I mentioned that a lot in some of my other videos. <clears throat> but I think the first thing that I want to do here is uh, I want I want this um, her to be the, the main focal point of this uh, picture. So I'm going to go ahead and actually blur the background a little bit more and what I'll do to, to do that is uh, um, I will actually create a couple layers and um, blur it. And I'm going to kind of run through that because that's not like the main point of this tutorial. So um, I'm going to just grab my quick selection tool. If it's not up right away in your tool palette, you can just click and hold and there's a couple different options there. Your magic wand is probably the one that's on the forefront, but go ahead and click the quick selection tool. And you can go ahead and with an image like this, um, the quick selection tool works really well because there's a lot of contrast between the figure in the foreground and her background. If it's not that easy, um, you can look up my video of how to cut a person out of a picture, and you can use some of those techniques to kind of isolate the, the person that way instead of using the quick selection tool, because sometimes this doesn't always work um, as well as it is for me right now. So I'm just kind of clicking through and getting kind of a basic selection because I don't need her, the uh, background to be real crisp. Right now I'm actually selecting her so that I can make a a more blurred background layer. Um, and what I'll do is, and that's that looks pretty close, that's close enough. I will go ahead and just create a mask here so that you can see if I uh, click off of the background layer I have pretty much isolated her. So I will click the the background layer back on and I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of that. And I'm going to make the first background layer invisible um, just so that I have it to go back to like I said. I can call this background blur or something like that because that's simply what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this layer, I'm going to select this layer that I just created and what I did to copy that background layer, I'm sorry I kind of skipped that part, was I pressed Control J on the keyboard. The other thing that you could do is click and drag that layer down into the new layer uh, button and that would also make a copy of that layer. Um, so like I was going uh, getting at, if I click this layer and I go up to filter and uh, go to blur, add a Gaussian blur, that uh, that will work for my purposes here. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more of a blur on there and you can see if I preview I can make it you know very blurred or I can uh, kind of back off a little bit. So I'm going to just do kind of a little bit of a subtle blur but just add a little bit more. And that's just once again to make my my uh, image of this this girl uh, pop a little bit more. So um, and the other good thing that I can do here is I can click on this background layer and I can go up to my uh, my image modes and I can adjust, um, I can auto tone, auto contrast, or auto color them separately, which is actually what I'm going to do because uh, I actually want the background to be a little bit lighter and keep her a little bit darker just to give it a little bit more contrast and add a little bit more to this effect. So now that I've uh, done a, a few maintenance items, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here with um, my, my blending uh, modes tutorial that uh, you're really here to see. So, um, what we'll do is we'll actually create a new layer and we want it to be on top of the um, layer with the girl because we're going to add some highlights and um, lowlights to her image. So we'll click our topmost layer and we'll go ahead and just create this button down here to create a new layer. And um, we can call this one highlights. And what we'll do is we'll, we can go grab a brush from our tool palette over here and if we go up to the top here and we um, click the drop down, we can have some settings here. We want our hardness set to zero because we want some really soft edges for this. Um, the size is kind of dependent upon the, the image. You kind of want it to be 
kind of kind of big, but uh, it's it's really up to you. You're gonna have to play around with that. So, um, so what you'll do is you select your brush, you set the hardness to zero, and you select the size that you want, and you can just kind of start painting on some highlights where you think that they should be. I'll just kind of paint a few on here. I'm gonna press my left bracket button to shrink my brush a little bit so that I can get um, a little bit more of these areas. Maybe this looks like a little bit of a highlight. Go a little smaller, hit my left bracket button, a little highlight in the breast area there. Maybe on the neck. And uh, the face is already highlighted pretty well. Maybe just try to add one there or something. And uh, what we'll do is we can double click now after we've made all these um, painted on highlights. We uh, can double click on our highlights layer and that'll bring up our layer styles. And the first thing that's selected is blending options and the actual section that we're gonna be working with is the blend if section. Um, you can select different colors to blend if. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on gray because we're working with uh, white and black. So it will be um, working with those color values. If you were going to try to add highlights and lowlights in a different color, you might wanna try to select one of these red, blue, green um, areas. So since we want the highlights to kind of append and feather to the underlying layer, and I'm just going to say it that way because that's the way Photoshop calls it, we're going to be working with this bottom layer. Uh, this layer is actually talking about the, the white stuff that we painted on, but we want the white stuff to blend to the layer underlying the one that we just created. So this is a very important part. Um, I'll just show you first what this does. If you just drag some of these things, it kind of blends to the layer below, right? And if you drag the white, it, it kind of gets um, less blended. And if you drag the black, um, since we didn't really use a black value, it kind of enhances the blacks that are already underlying. So actually, I'm going to go ahead and just drag that one over because I could see that it got rid of some white in this area and, uh, you know, around the swimsuit in general. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that over because that looks pretty good. And then what I'll do, and this, this is where it's important, you want to hit Alt on your keyboard and if you hit Alt on your keyboard, it actually separates this into two separate um, entities and it will feather your selection back down to your original one. So you can see um, it's more of a subtle effect now. Now you can also tell that this is kind of a harsh light still. So there's a couple things that you can do about that. You can change your opacities. But uh, another good thing you can do is change your blending mode, and for this kind of thing I usually use um, a soft light blending mode, and that kind of uh, takes it down very well right there. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just click OK with that. And if you, know, if you want to erase or add to this at this point, you can still do that with your brush. So uh, let's say I wanted this to be a little bit more defined. I could try to brush some more on there or in this area. Say I wanted to extend that to the edge, or I could um, take the eraser tool and erase some of that too, like if I go over the edge. See? So um, so there's white, and you can do the same thing with um, low lights or the darker areas in the picture. So I'll go ahead and create a new layer, and we'll call this uh, shadows. And I will grab my brush tool again, and I'll keep the hardness and that uh, the hardness at zero and my brush size about the same. But if I switch the colors around here and I want black on the top, I can go ahead and actually paint in some of these darker areas. And this is, uh, I've already ran through this once. So with this image, definitely um, bringing out some of these darker areas is what really makes it nice. So I'll just paint a few of these on here. And then what we'll do is kind of the same thing, but in the reverse. So I will double click on the shadows layer, it brings up my layer styles, and I'll go down to my blend if. I can slide the, the sliders over to see if it uh, changes much, and if I want to do any hard um, kind of effects with that. But once again, very important, hit the Alt button, and you can split these in half to kind of feather it to the layer below. 
go ahead and go to the blend mode at the top and set the blend mode to soft light again and you can see that it adds kind of a quite nice effect. And you can just keep sliding that over, make it more subtle, you can bring the opacity down if it's still too much. And I think right about there is where I'm going to want it. Um, you know, there's still some harsh lights here, so if I if I wanted to, I could go in and uh, and you know erase some of those things or add some of those things back in and just kind of soften the edges a little bit. With the eraser, once again, I have the hardness set to zero, and that's just to keep all my edges very soft with this effect. And that looks pretty good. So um, at this point, what I can do is I can show you. Um, the image without the highlights and without the lowlights. You, you can see exactly what we've done. So there's without the shadows first. So you can see that that, uh, that quite enhanced it. If you if you want them to be darker, once again, you can double click, open back up your your blending modes layer. You can set this to 100 actually and um, work with the opacity on the actual layer as well. So it does the same sort of thing. So if you wanted to, to do that, you can do that, and um, and you can see that it's a little bit more pronounced now. You might want to go in once again and touch up some of these areas. And just brush in some more color, or erase a little bit. But something like that. Uh, is starting to look a little better. So there's without the shadows, with the shadows, there's without the, the highlights. So we've really come a long way. Um, and just to show you, if I click open into my history, here's the image that we start with, and here's the image that we end with. So um, I actually don't really like the background blurred very much, so what I could do at this point is actually re-enable my background layer and get rid of my background blur layer and uh, do something kind of like that. And what I could do is, uh, since I still liked the coloring of the background, I could make another copy. I could do a, I select this layer and hit Control J to make another copy and I could uh, get some of my, my auto tones and that back on there. So actually, um, I, I actually like this better than my blurred layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete that blurred layer and um, and show you the highlights and, and lowlights from there. So here's what it was at the beginning. And now pay attention to the highlights and the lowlights from, from burning and dodging with the blend if tool. And there it is at the end. So you can see we've added a lot of definition there. And I can click these on and off again to show you. Um, if you decide you don't like the highlights layer or the lowlights layer, you might just want to do one. So here's with just adding some darker values. Okay, um, I think that kind of uh, finishes up my video, so if you liked this video, please uh, hit the subscribe button. Please give it a thumbs up to support my, my video. Uh, check out some of my other videos and uh, find me on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, Thanks for watching.